let me first thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about uh, our Banca d'Italia solution, which is called Tipsash Link. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in this presentation, we want just to give you a glance of the basic feature of Tipsash Link. Plenty of information will come into the demo the demo video that you will see after that, and what you will find in the service description documentation that we are going to provide to you. It is a living document, so we will gain expertise and it will drive us along this journey of the exploratory work. Basically, our Tipsash Link solution uh, offers an interoperability model between generic market TLT platform and payment system. And it is based on uh, a DLT agnostic application programming interface. DLT agnostic means that we do not trust of any specific features on the DLT side. Uh, basically, we have no requirements for external DLT besides two very basic features. First, cryptographic primitives like hashing, and second, the capacity to run smart contract. All the business logic resides on the market uh, DLT. And our API is a REST-like uh, API, so it, mm, it is based on this protocol and the payload of the messages is standard ISO 222 payload as we used to uh, in the target services domain. Next slide, please. Well, this is just a quick word cloud, meaning that all the things, all the topics that are covered by our service description, uh, going through the uh, onboarding process, all the features of our solution, a detailed API catalog together with a swagger, uh, some sort of sandbox where you can interact uh, and simulate our APIs. And then all that comes with the uh, experimental approach by the Eurosystem. Uh, so onboarding, liquidity management, business day with tips slash link, handling with normal and abnormal situation, as well as use cases. Next slide, please. Well, here, uh, just to remind you about the onboarding and testing uh, process, but already was shown by the ECB very well. So the eligible market participant and operator must complete their technical onboarding process before taking part to trials and experiment. Next slide. Market participants and operators have to send a signed form three. Actually, now we have a little bit changed the game of the three forms. Uh, it's the registration form uh, part two, which is solution specific and send it to their responsible NCB to be allowed to operate with Tipsash Link. Then we go through the testing phase one, as we did uh, technical connectivity, security mechanism test with the API gateway component, and we may conduct some operational and functional tests. Then we have already know this, uh, the testing phase two, where market participants with their responsible national central bank and market D operator would perform some, some sort of dress rehearsal, a full trial day process with the desired use case. And then last but not least, as Holger mentioned, we have the signing of the legal arrangement between the Eurosystem and eligible market participant, as well as Eurosystem and eligible market DLT operators. Next slide. Well, here I want to highlight a specific feature of our Tipsash Link solution. Uh, Tipsash Link solution is hosted inside Banca d'Italia and is a second instance of the Tips uh, engine. But trusting on the uh, multi currency capabilities of Tips, Tipsash Link can segregate, I mean, the trials for our from experiments by using two different uh, 
currency codes, the EUR standard uh, currency euro for trials and the EXP for experiments. There is very little difference just in the specification when invoking the APIs. But we can enjoy this full segregation of cash, uh, not mixing real money for trials with the mock transaction for experiments. Next slide. Then another aspect that you can find in the service description is U2A and A2A connectivity. So plenty of information on how to interact in a A2A mode by invoking all the APIs for submitting transaction uh, like DVP, but also the U2A channel for basic information tools and monitoring purposes. Uh, both function enjoy uh, all the security uh, um, features that are provided with the API gateway, such as API, IP filtering and the user access control. Next slide. On the information tools, very quickly, at uh, the following we, early, you, you can find this walker where all the APIs are well uh, described. And this URL provides four different sections one for a tip slash link overview, the full service description documents, and the gateway and participant API. And when it comes to monitoring how the trials and experiment are proceeding, then each project, let's say, uh, which is a trial or an experiment, is identified by a specific acronym, PRJ and an ID, uh, all the projects, let's say, uh, are uh, fully segregated and there are specific views for the user there. And uh, the dashboard the user can, uh, can access is made to display selected reports data in a tabular form, change the date the reports refer to, and copy export all the data they are involved in the uh, experiment or trial. Next slide. And then in the end, uh, the full protocol description, use case by use case. Here it's just a sample of all the steps which are described for a DVP to happen uh, with Tipsash link. And it's made of five steps that are described very into details. And we will see in the upcoming demo, but also uh, other use cases like uh, life cycle management and so forth. Again, it is a living document. So we will try to add the, the, the more use cases come, the more we will publish into our service description. So we are finally there and we can start with our demo on, uh, let, let's say a complete show of the uh, exploratory work phase with Tipsash link and a deep dive into the DVP flow. Dear participants, market DLT operators, ECB and central bank colleagues, welcome to the demo of the TIPS Hashlink solution operated by Banca d'Italia. In this presentation, we will give you an overview of the specific demo setup. Then we will describe all the phases of the exploratory work business day and finally, we will have a deep dive into the DVP trial flow. The first item we will illustrate is the TIPS hash link demo setup. The reference setup for today's TIPS hash link demo consists of a market DLT platform, here shown on the left hand side. The yellow square in the middle represents the TIPS hash link infrastructure operated by Banca d'Italia in a private cloud environment. The last square on the right hand side corresponds to T2, the real time gross settlement system owned and operated by the Euro system and used to implement the escrow mechanism. Today's business case is a trial DVP transaction between two eligible participants. In this slide, they are represented by the seller and the buyer. The asset leg of the transaction is settled on the market DLT platform, whereas the cash leg is settled on the TIPS Ashling platform. Participants have wallets in the market DLT platform 
and euro denominated accounts in TIPS Ashlink. The seller owns the asset to be exchanged in his wallet. The icons of the seller and the buyer in this slide correspond to the participants' software applications that communicate directly with the market DLT platform and the API gateway. Now we will illustrate the TIPS Hashlink Standard Business Day. This is the Standard Business Day schedule with all the cutoffs from 9 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. The trial DVP flow we are presenting today can be broken down into four main phases. The first phase lasts until 9 a.m. and this is when the funding process of the central bank escrow account takes place. The second phase goes from 9 until 9.59 a.m. During this period, Banca d'Italia, as TIPS Hashlink operator, performs the minting process on the TIPS Hashlink cash accounts based on the information provided by the relevant central banks. The third phase goes from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. and is dedicated to the real-time settlement. Finally, the fourth phase, that goes from 2 p.m. until 3.30 p.m. and consists in the execution of the end-of-day procedures, which are the alignment, the burning, the defunding. Given this background information on the different phases of the business day schedule, we can now introduce our DVP trial flow. So the phase one is the funding process. Until 9 a.m., participants are expected to fund the central bank escrow account via the execution of a liquidity transfer from their RTGS account in the T2 prod environment. The central bank prepares the minting form with a breakdown of funds received from all participants and sends it to Banca d'Italia. The second phase is the minting process. The operator means the exploratory liquidity by debiting the Euro Transit account and crediting the participant's cash account. This happens via the technical injection of a CAMT 050 liquidity transfer XML message, which is based on the information taken from the minting form. Worth remembering that the TIPS Hashlink solution operates with the same ISO 20022 standard XML messages used in the Eurosystem target services domain. At the bottom of the slide, we have reported what the operator screen looks like at the start of the day. As you can see, all TIPS Hashlink cash accounts have a zero balance. This is because for trials, no liquidity is carried overnight. In this slide, we continue describing the minting process. In particular, we highlight the data needed by the operator for the exploratory liquidity minting process. And these data are the currency code, the creditor BIC, the creditor account, the amount, and the settlement date. In the table, we can also observe the participants' main information, which are the account ID, the cash account name, the party big, the currency code, euro for trials and export experiment. With regard to the cash account name structure, please note that the second and third letters represent the central bank country code, in our case, IT for Italy, and the suffix is the trial or experiment ID, here PRJ1203. With the minting execution, the amount is transferred from the Eurotransit account to the participants' account and the balances are updated. As a consistency check on the TIPS Hashlink platform, the operator verifies that the sum of the balances of all participants' accounts is equal to the overall balance of the Eurotransit account. And this is the same for all the accounts used for experiments. After the minting execution at 10 a.m., Banca d'Italia opens the API Getaway A2A channel to the external world. From now on, participants can start submitting DVP transactions. So far, we have shown what the operator screen looks like. Now, we present the dashboard of the users.
Central banks, participants, and market DLT operators can check the balance of their TIPS hashlink cash accounts after the minting process. In this example, we display the cash account balance involved in the minting process of the trial named PRJ1. Please remember that each trial or experiment has a specific segregated data scope. From 10 a.m., we enter the third phase, the so-called real-time settlement phase. Participants may now submit DVP transactions until 2 p.m. according to the TIPS Ashlink DVP protocol. This protocol, which we will now describe in detail, is structured in four steps. The first one is the DVP initialization. In this simulated trial, the seller invokes the initialization service on the API gateway by communicating the DVP information. The API gateway then generates the DVP identifier, the pre-images, which are kept secret, and the corresponding cryptographic proofs, here shown with the red and green logs. The DVP identifier and the cryptographic proofs are collected in the API gateway response, which is sent both to the seller and to the buyer. The next four slides describe the second step of the TIPS Hashlink protocol that takes place on the market DLT platform. The seller collects the data received in the initialization response and publishes a Hashlink contract on the market DLT platform. This current slide shows the main Hashlink contract attributes, the DVP ID, the asset ID, and the hashed pre-images protecting the asset. Here, you can see the specific Hashlink contract address where all these data are stored. This address can be visualized with a blockchain explorer tool, as we will examine in the next slides. To check that the Hashlink contract actually contains the locked asset, the buyer uses the Blockchain Explorer tool by typing the Hashlink contract address in the search field. This information is shown in the slide in the yellow square. The asset is transferred from the seller address to the Hashlink contract address. Look at the column marked with from and to. Furthermore, by clicking on the transaction ID that created the Ashling contract, the buyer may retrieve further transaction information as shown in the next slide. The buyer can retrieve here the Ashling contract address, the hashed pre-images, and the asset ID. These data are the same received in the initialization response of the API gateway. Let's now consider the seller's view. As illustrated here, all the data available to the buyer are also available to the seller. To access this information, the seller uses the Blockchain Explorer tool again by typing its own address or the Hashlink contract address in the search field. We shall now continue by describing the third step of the TIPS Hashlink protocol, which is when the buyer can proceed with the payment. In our simulated trial, the buyer invokes the payment service on the API gateway, which embeds a standard PAX008 XML message. The API gateway forwards the payment message to the TIPS Hashlink settlement engine, and the engine transfers the funds from the buyer's cash account to the seller cash account. Finally, the settlement engine generates a payment response in the form of a PAX002. Such response is then forwarded by the API gateway to both the buyer and the seller. The payment response carries the DVP transaction identifier received in the initialization response in the step one of the protocol. The TIPS hash link operator can monitor the settlement process by checking the statement of accounts and the balances. In the statement of accounts here, you may now see the settled transaction with the amount agreed between the seller and the buyer. At the bottom of the slide, we report the updated cash account balances. We now move to the last step of the DVP transaction protocol, the DVP finalization. 
For the purposes of this demo, we only consider the happy path identified in the protocol as the cooperative or bilateral execution. The collaborative seller, after receiving the payment response by the API Gateway, immediately unlocks the asset in the Ashling contract by transferring it to the buyer's wallet. Since this is the happy path example, the activity is completed without sending any pre-images to the buyer. In the Blockchain Explorer tool, both the buyer and the seller can now display a new transaction, the asset leg or the DVP. Here, we can see how the asset has been transferred to the buyer's wallet. All the steps of the TIPS Hashlink DVP protocol have now been completed, and both the asset leg and the cash leg of a transaction are settled. In this slide, we can observe the participants' dashboard showing the statement of accounts where they can check all the payments and the liquidity transfers that took place during a specific trial. With the real-time settlement completed, we can now move on to the last phase of the business day schedule, the phase 4, that takes place from 2 p.m. until 3.30 p.m. During this time, the end-of-day procedures are executed. Banca d'Italia closes the TIPS Ashlink API Getaway A2A channel, and from now on, any further incoming requests are rejected. The end of the procedures that Banca d'Italia performs in phase four are the alignment reporting to all central banks, the burning of the exploratory liquidity, the creation of the reports to support the central bank defunding process in T2. So the first procedure is the alignment. This is triggered in case of transaction between eligible market participants of different jurisdictions. To perform the alignment, Banca d'Italia processes the statement of accounts, calculates the bilateral turnovers, and sends a report to each central bank with the amounts to be transferred to the other central bank's escrow accounts. At this point, the updated balance of the central bank escrow account corresponds to the amount that will be defunded to the market participants in T2. In our example, no cross-border transaction took place, therefore the turnovers amount to zero. The second end-of-day procedure is the so-called burning. The operator burns the exploratory liquidity by debiting the participant's cash account and crediting the Eurotransit account. This happens via a technical liquidity train. At this stage, as already illustrated in the minting process, the operator enters all the needed parameters, which are the currency code, the debt to BIC, the creditor account, the amount, and the settlement date. When the burning process is completed, all the balances of the participants' cash accounts must be zero. We have now come to the last end-of-day procedure, the defunding. The operator runs an automatic procedure to generate the defunding report to be sent to all central banks. These reports contain the breakdown of funds to be transferred from the central bank's escrow accounts to the RTGS accounts of the participants in T2. All the end of the procedure have now been completed. There is one more step the operator has to perform, the change of the business date in the system. This activity consists in sending a CAMP019 message to the TIPS Ashling platform. The business day has now ended. This brings our presentation also to a close. We thank you for your attention and the colleagues of Banca d'Italia are now available to take your questions. So, Really, thank you for your attention. I'm now reading the chat. Uh, very few questions, thank you. Yeah. I don't know if this is a good or a bad sign. And anyway- Giuseppe, start... that's a good sign. That means it was <laughs> totally clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, starting from a, a couple of questions about the, the, the Swagger and the tip such link API specs in, in URL invalid page not found. Well, uh, actually, uh, 
you, you were so quick, thank you. Uh, but as we explained for security measures, the U2A access is protected with the IEP whitelisting. But in, in this phase, uh, you will have plenty of documentation, all the API catalog and description into the service description. But as soon as you uh, have uh, an expression of interest with tip slash link and when it start connectivity and onboarding, you will get U2A access and then everything will be disclosed. And then uh, coming to the, uh, I mean, the command line screenshots of the API gateway is shown into the presentation. Well, actually, le let me explain that that was only the tip slash link operator view for the sake of, tra of transparency. We just open the engine chassis to, to let you put your eyes into our engine. But the banks only need to connect to the API gateway by invoking the APIs. Uh, I stress this point because the Ashlink solution does not require a participant to run any particular software component. Interaction only happens via REST-like APIs. So the A2A protocol, which we call Ashlink. Uh, now I see, uh, yeah, the, the, the question that I see on the screen is about consistency and how tip such link solution uh, realizes atomicity. Well, actually, through the APIs and with the happy flow and all the unhappy paths, I mean, there is a, a state uh, automata machine that you can follow and it is completely described into the service description. So by means of using the pre-images of the secrets, if there is no cooperative execution, then the seller or the buyer can trigger a forced execution of a, a forced cancellation. But through the usage of all the API, as you will see in the full description, then you can enjoy, uh, uh, let's say, full integrity between the cache leg and the security leg of the uh, DVP transaction. We make, for instance, the DVP, but it could be a PVP interleaked operation, uh, whatever. But everything will be more clear and very well detailed into our uh, documentation. And again, uh, you have our contact. So even for the nuts and bolts, just uh, drop us a, an email and we will reply. I, I hope uh, I uh, answered correctly to your question. <laughs>